Hello and welcome to this webinar. My name is Bastian. And I'll try to, um, well, guide you through this event tonight. And I'm joined by the Photomagical lead developer, Peter. Hi. Hi, nice to have you here. Oh, and good to be here. Just as of today, we released Photomagical 4.2. Exactly. And mm -hmm. yeah, that's that's pretty exciting by itself. Um, but even more exciting is what Photomagical 4.2 will bring to the people. And we've got like yeah, three new major things. Mm -hmm. Well, um, uh, f version 4.0 introduced a new feature called layers. And a lot of interesting effects were possible with that. Mm -hmm. But now we enhanced it with uh, the, uh, the masks feature. Now you can... Uh, uh, show or hide certain parts of a layer with a mask and create entirely new effects. Okay. So, and, and we're going to show a lot of advanced tips and tricks uh, with masks today. Okay, that sounds great. And, um, well, the other thing that came with Photomagical 4.2 is the possibility to make layers transparent. So exactly. Or semi-transparent, depends on what you need. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the new things, so you can make one layer semi-transparent while the others are not affected by that without having to go to an image editing application beforehand and saving a semi-transparent image. Yeah, and those two uh, <coughs> features are um, new creative, uh, um, open up new yep. creative uh, opportunities, whereas the, the next new feature, autosave, uh, is something that um, just speeds up the uh, authoring process of a slideshow. Makes sense. And last but not least, um, saving just got a lot more quick. Yeah, um, we managed to uh, uh, dramatically reduce this uh, saving time, uh, especially if you're um, making lots of small edits, like changing a slide duration here, changing the color correction there. Um, and then you uh, hit Command S repeatedly. Um, it used to, for a large slideshow. It used to take a minute or longer to save uh, your slideshow document, and now we uh, managed to reduce it to about half a second. So that's uh, a huge time saver while you're editing a large uh, slideshow. And in case you're one of the persons who thinks, well. Maybe I forget forget saving. If you want to, you can now even enable autosave, and with exactly. that, exactly. Well, you don't ha you don't have to think about it anymore. And that's that's the key. So before we jump into Photomagical four um, or four point two, I should say, um, let me show you something because at the very end we'll gonna open up for questions, and I want to quickly show you um, how to submit questions. So right now you're probably at this um, streaming website. And let me show you something because at the very end... Let me pause that for a second. <laughs> <laughs> and, <coughs> excuse me. And um, at the right-hand side, there is a chat. And um, to post something there, um, you just type it in, hit enter, and then it asks you to log in. Um, if you have a Facebook account, just log in with your Facebook account or um, join with your email address. Joining is free. Um, like this, you can just post questions whenever you have them. We will make sure we'll answer them at the very at the very end. And um, I think this makes it pretty easy for both of us um, to, to get your, your questions, for you to get your questions out and for us to get your questions answered. And um, that's everything you need to, you, you need to do to um, send us questions. Um, if you want to, you can also send us questions over Twitter if you want to. Um, just post them to at Boeing Slabs or Boeing Software if you're more comfortable with that. We will um, take a look at those at the very end uh, when we come to our Q&A session. And I will close down Safari right now because we will gonna, we are gonna jump into Photomagical right away and mm -hmm. show off what we have there. And let's just go there. Why don't we start out with uh, autosave and show them uh, how to enable or disable autosave? <coughs> okay, when you are in Photomagico, let's just th that's that's the way Photomagico normally looks like. And if you go to the preferences up here, you will find enable autosave, and you can just check the box, and that will periodically every time one makes a noticeable change to the slideshow, mm -hmm. it will autosave the the document in, in the background and you don't have to worry anymore. Um, so 
if you want to do that, just go into the preferences and check the box. Mm -hmm. So, and um, I think I'm allowed to do the first, the first basic, basic, <coughs> excuse me, tip um, that we want to share today because that's something we're gonna use a lot, um, and that is, well, geometry, in general, and copying and pasting geometry. So I'm adding a slide or a photo to a slide. And um, maybe you, you just want to explain shortly what is the geometry? What Well, um, what we call geometry is basically the combination of position, zoom factor, and rotation mm -hmm. of, of a layer. Uh, if we're considering uh, this, this layer right here, uh, we can move it around. That's position. Mm -hmm. we, can, uh, we can zoom it. Mm -hmm, makes sense. Or we can rotate it. L uh, let's say we, we've we got this geometry here. It's uh, slightly off to the left. It's zoomed a little bit, and it's, uh, it's rot rotated a little bit. What if we want to have the exactly the same geometry on the other side, on the finished side. Well, you could, of course, try to match it, but there is a super easy way to do that, and that is by simply right-clicking on your image, on the, 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 the visual element that you want um, to well, copy to, and you click Copy Geometry, and then you go to the right-hand side and say, again with a right-click, Paste Geometry, and boom, Everything is just the same. And if you now just zoom in, that means it is at the very exact same um, position. position. And it has the same um, rotation. <coughs> rotation. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And only the zoom is different. And if, if we play that now, let's say it set that to five seconds, you will see they will just zoom in at the very point where it is. And this works for titles. This works for images and we will see in a second that there is that new thing we were just talking about that it also works for and well that's copying and pasting geometry that's one of the very important things to keep in mind today and um, I think off we go and mm -hmm. we'll we'll um, we'll take a look okay then we take a look at transparent layers so how is how does that work now? Well, um, we used to have uh, up to six layers uh, since Photomagico 4.0, mm -hmm. but each layer was always uh, opaque. So a layer was co uh, that was was in front of another layer completely covered up the bottom layer. Mm -hmm. uh, but sometimes you might want to uh, have tr uh, partly transparent uh, layers so that the bottom layer shines through. Mm -hmm. And that's um, easily uh, done now. Um, let's just remove this for now. Let's say, let's have the, uh, this image here, and then we'll add another one on top. Mm -hmm. um, so now it's, uh, uh, it covers up uh, wh what is beneath. Yeah. But if we go to the options, we can ch uh, lower the opacity by, uh, by dragging this line in the visibility control, and the uh, image becomes transparent. So, so that is um, a simple way of achieving transparency. That was pretty easy. So basically just just moving the line down and that's just, it. Just dragging the line. Or if you uh, click on, on this this bar, you get a, um, a, a popover and y you can also use the slider or uh, even enter um, a numeric value, like 50%. Okay, that's, well, you've got the direct access and you've got all the detailed fine grain um, possibilities to change all the settings. Exactly. Now. This example here, um, it was just uh, an image on top of another image, mm -hmm. but where it really makes sense is text on an image mm -hmm. yep. to have transparent titles. And that is, all, um, let's get, get rid of this, this layer here. 
And now let's just add a title. Oh, just hit the cable here. Okay. Okay, we, now we've got a title. Let's move it down a little bit, zoom it. And now we're going to use that copy geometry, paste geometry that we showed you copy geometry here on the start side. And we paste the geometry on the finish side. So now the text is in exactly the same position. Mm -hmm. The image um, layer below will do a zoom in effect. And the white type of the title mm -hmm. is a little bit too... Uh, yeah, uh, to contrast yeah. So I would like to um, make it partly transparent so we get a, a more subtle effect. Mm -hmm. And let's just play that. Let's take a look. And you can see that, uh, that the texture of the uh, image uh, shines through uh, yeah. below the text. Yeah. And that, that makes titles much more elegant. It's so easy to, to just adjust the, the, the transparency to a level where you want it to be. And um, just by dragging down that, that, that line there, mm -hmm. and that's it. So that is something, uh, as we said, especially for titles, makes a lot of sense. It's easy to do. And, well, as what Peter just said, the, the, the image below shines through. That makes things look a lot better. And... Well, um, so much for, for transparency, um, and I just can't wait to get to masks because there is so much great mm -hmm. thing, things you can do with masks. And um, let's start very simple, as simple as it gets. Yeah, all right. So let's delete this again. And now um, let's use a vertical uh, a a portrait orientation mm -hmm. image because... Uh, well, we could use uh, portrait orientation images before. Um, it always was uh, somewhat problematic uh, because uh, uh, slideshows are usually a uh, horizontal yeah. uh, uh, presentation medium. Sure. So if we place a vertical image on the stage, we usually get, uh, we either, we zoom it up all the way, so it covers the whole stage. Then, but then we lose most of the image. Exactly. Uh, or we could uh, uh, present the whole image, but then we get uh, background to the left and the right. Yeah. Okay. Um, that m might be fine depending on your uh, on your style. But what if you want to animate the image? Let's say uh, we'll zoom uh, we'll we'll zoom in a little bit and we'll rotate a little bit. Mm -hmm. So if we take a look at that, now we get to see uh, moving edges, which doesn't look nice. Yeah, that looks kind of weird. So um, the solution, uh, or to make it, let's um, make it even more drastic so we can see the, ch so it, it does look weird because of the moving edges. Yeah. So the, the solution is uh, to apply a mask to clip away the moving edges. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, the way to do that is we select uh, the layer, and there's now a new submenu called mask. And it, uh, by default, it says none. Uh, it doesn't have a mask. Yeah. And we'll just use a, rect a rectangular mask right now. And you could see that here on, on this side, it has been clipped. Mm-hmm. Um, the um, everything outside uh, of the mask uh, is now invisible, and let's play that again. Ooh, and the, the edges on the right and left hand side just stay where they are. They stay put where they are. Ah, that's all. So, uh, now it's uh, much easier to use uh, vertical images in a horizontal slideshow mm -hmm. mm -hmm. without having uh, distracting moving edges. Correct, and and you can you can probably adjust the mask as much as you want, and um, well, yeah, go crazy with it, and um, yeah, uh, just to give you an idea how to work with masks, um, this layer is now masked. If we click on the layer and move, you can see that 
the parts of the uh, image that are being ma uh, masked away are are shown a little bit tra uh, transparently. Mm -hmm. And once you release the mouse, um, this transparent uh, preview is gone again. So it just gives you a visual help to, to position your, your image in, inside the mask. Inside the mask, e exactly. So you can move around the image inside the mask. You can still zoom the image. And the inside mask the always mask, stays the same. The mask always stays in place. Unless you want it to change. Okay, and uh, now we've got s uh, something new appeared. Uh, this control only shows up when a layer has a mask. Mm -hmm. And right now it says edit layer. That's um, when, I, uh, when we click and move, we're moving the layer. Mm -hmm. But if we switch that to edit mask, now we're moving the frame ah. of the mask. And one thing that I'm noticing is that while you're moving that mask on the right-hand side, the left-hand side stays where it is. So that means animations can also be done within masks, so you can move the mask. Exactly. I think we'll co come to that later on again, because that opens up a whole new amount of creative possibilities that mm -hmm. you can um, probably um, take advantage of. And, um, well, the other thing that this gives you the possibility to do is creating picture-in-picture -picture effects. It's not like that mm -hmm. was impossible before. Well, you could do picture-in-picture -picture effects with layers before, but uh, um, if the small picture that is sitting on top of the, the larger picture um, had content that you didn't want to show, you were out of luck, you... Uh, um, would have uh, to go to an image editing yeah. application like Photoshop or uh, Pixelmator to crop away yeah, yeah. Uh, the stuff that you don't want and then uh, place the image on top of the other mm -hmm, one. Mm -hmm. But now with uh, masks, it's much easier. You don't uh, have to modify your image files anymore. Correct. Or if you just want the picture in picture to be square, then go for it. And it's, again, as easy as it, as, as it was let's before. Let's just uh, do an example. Let's start out with an image, mm -hmm. and um, we'll do a slight zoom in effect. And now we'll add, uh, instead of a uh, picture in picture, we'll do a movie in picture. Mm -hmm. Just uh, to show you, mask can be applied to images, movies, or titles. It yep. doesn't matter. Makes sense. So let's add a movie here. And we'll just zoom it a little bit bigger. And now we'll use copy geometry again and paste the geometry here on the finish side so we get exactly the mm -hmm. same um, positioning. Okay, five seconds is a little bit slow. Let's do 15 seconds. Okay. So and right now the the image touches the uh, the video touches the edge and it goes uh, off the edge, and that could be visually improved. Let's yeah. put it that way. So let's just uh, take a uh, check what it looks like right now. So we've got a video uh, of of the skier, but uh, the video is really off and it's uh, um, touching the edge of the screen. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing now, we'll, we select this layer, we once ag again go to the mask menu, and we're saying, okay, we want to clip this to a 43 portrait aspect ratio. Mm -hmm. So now that's something unusual. Video is usually a, a, a horizontal. Now we're doing a vertical orientation mm -hmm. one. And to separate it a little bit from the background, um, we are also going to add a white border around the video. Okay. And I, I just noticed may, maybe we should move it a little bit because uh, so we, we have th the same distance. Uh, here's a little tip. Um, if you press the shift key, mm -hmm. you can move uh, an image, uh, a, a layer and the mask together. And that's the reason why, why Peter is always here for those webinars, because these are kind of 
um, inside tips that always also blew my mind, blow my mind because mm -hmm. that's something I did not know. That is pretty amazing. So now let's take a look what it looks like now. And it sits there nicely in the corner, like like a and like a moving photo. That's uh, great. And and you can see that the skier moves into the frame, but then as the skier um, uh, skis away from us, uh, it gets pretty small. Mm -hmm. And we would like to be uh, t uh, t uh, the the subject of the video to be larger. Mm -hmm. So how about just uh, using uh, uh, the zoom? To zoom in a little bit. And now the uh, the layer, the video, oh, we could use even more zoom, I guess. But yeah, but you get the idea basically, yeah. But and that's 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 pretty astonishing because we're doing those uh, live edits on cropping the video, zooming the video, and all that is done in real time. We don't mm -hmm. need to go to any editing application. And now you can see um, we are still on the, on the skier, um, pretty much zoomed um, to him. And that's, that's pretty amazing. But uh, you, you didn't really notice that the video was being zoomed because yep. uh, the mask was always staying yep. uh, in place. That, that's true. So that was, that was a, pretty, a pretty quick but still impressive um, demonstration of picture-in-picture -picture effects. And um, the next thing we could do is something you might have seen in case you would watched the demo slideshow. Um, there were side-by-side -side, um, images, slides at the, at the very end where we had two portrait images moving um, along. And, well, we did that with uh, just cropping one image in two halves and just moving them side-by-side. And um, that's even easier now, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show that to you. So, let's just remove your skier here. Mm -hmm. And we have two images, two portraits. And on the one um, portrait, the lady is on the, on the right-hand side of the image. And on the next one we see over here, the guy is on the left-hand side of the image. So, first thing we do, again, what we did before, um, I'm going to copy the geometry here a little bit because I, I don't want it to zoom in that case. I just want it to move. So what, what I want to do is I want her to move from there to there just to give you an idea. So she's moving from the top to the bottom. But I don't need the left half of the image. So what do I do? Again, I right click, I select mask. And I want the right half of the screen. I just select that preset. That's basically it. I think, did I copy the geometry? Let's just check that. Oh. Yes, I did, but then I moved the, <laughs> I moved the layer. So um, right now, just to check that again, she's moving from top to bottom. Now let's add that guy. L add him as another layer on top. We zoom him in all the way. So he covers the entire thing. Again, we copy geometry. That saves so much time when, you, when you're doing stuff like that. Um, and then I do the same thing for him, but the other mm -hmm. direction. It might be a little bit big. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. We, we, we can yeah. adjust that in a second. Mm -hmm. So I do the same thing I did before. I hit mask, and now I want the left-hand side of, this, of the of the screen. And as you said, well, yeah, he's a little bit too big here, but that's not a problem. I'm just scaling him down a little bit. Uh, that's, that's probably too much. Same thing here. I'm copying the geometry, pasting the geometry here, and moving down. And if I play that now, I have a side-by-side -side view of those two. Or maybe I want to reverse his, his animation because that's the wrong way around. And you will see she's moving down, he's moving up side by side. And it was quick and easy just by adding masks. And I, again, there mm -hmm. was no need for me to go into an image editing application to cut those things in halves just to make sure I have the, the right aspect ratio on both, mm -hmm. both of the images just by um, using the masks feature. Well, that was 
that was pretty easy. And I, I said before, well, moving masks, that is interesting because we can do interesting mm -hmm. effects with it. And I saw something you, you came up with, which is pretty Yeah, nifty. well, uh, the split screen effect or picture-in-picture, uh, picture, that's, uh, I would say that those are the most common usages yeah. for masks. Yeah. But now we're going to show you a couple of special effects that are possible with masks. Uh, well, and uh, I'm pretty excited to see what uh, users will come yeah. up with. Uh, definitely. So I in case you come up with something amazing in the, in the future with a mask feature, please let us know. So um, let's, let's use this image here, an image of a guy looking out the window in a, in a palace. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've got this image. Let's move it down a little bit. And we've got a little bit, how long is it? 15 seconds? OK. Yeah. And uh, we've got a little bit of a zoom in effect. Let's just check the animation. Well, we can zoom in a little bit more, I guess. Yeah, we've got a little bit of mm -hmm. a zoom in effect. Mm -hmm. So now um, I'm just going to adjust the animation a little bit. I want the animation, uh, the zoom in to uh, be uh, faster at first, and then it should slow down and uh, remain at the finished position mm -hmm. for a mm -hmm. while. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to add this same image as a second layer. Mm -hmm. It's just... So what I, I'll, I will do is I press the option key. Give me a second. Let's just let people uh, see that. I'll press the option key and drag the layer up. So the layer is duplicated. And now I'm going to modify the color correction of the bottom layer. And you will see in a second why. So what we'll do is the bottom layer well, um, the color, I'm going to make it m more blue. I'm going to desaturate. And I'm going to make it a little bit darker. As you can see down here, there's already, um, uh, it already looks different. And I'm going to lower the opacity of this layer a little bit to make mm -hmm. it even darker because the, the stage, uh, the background color is black. So if I make the layer partly transparent, it will automatically be uh, become darker because black sh shines through. To, to answer one question that was uh, asked during, um, during the presentation already, in case the, the slideshow background was white, then of course the white would shine through. Yes. Just, just to, to clarify this because, but we chose black and so that's, that's why it makes it even darker. So, but now, why did we do all that? Now I'm going to add a mask to the top layer. Mm -hmm. And let's go to the mask menu again. Now I'm going to use an oval mask. Okay. And now you can see, okay, it's oval. But uh, let's just say I'm... Uh, now it says 5, 000, about 5,000 by 3,000 pixels uh, large because that's uh, the size of the, uh, the image. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to do 1,500 by 1,500 now. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to make the edges soft. Okay. So now let's... See, uh, that's a little bit too soft. Let's change that again. Are oh. we on the right? No, we no. are. This one. Mm -hmm. There, maybe, maybe like that. And now, um, if we select um, the layer and cl uh, click on this control to edit the mask, I can move around the mask. I can make it a little bit smaller. No. There we go. There. Let's move it here. And here on this side, again, and make it a little bit 
bigger. Well, yeah, there. there we go. Okay, so now um, the mask is being animated. Mm -hmm. And let's just take a look. Um, let's collapse that. So now we've got uh, a, a spotlight effect, a moving spotlight mm -hmm. that moves uh, to the window where the guy is. And that was, again, pretty easy to do. And just keep in mind that, it, that, that you can, in, in, if, if you need, copy geometry. And there was one thing you just did, but people probably didn't notice. So in case you're, um, you just, you're here um, at, the, at the top layer and you want to edit the mask, you can also just double click it and that will go to editing mode for the mask if you have one applied. Exactly. Um, those of you who've used uh, uh, Apple's Pages application are probably familiar with that shortcut. Yep. Um, Pages uses the same shortcut to uh, enter edit mask mode when images are being put on, on a page. Yeah. And well, that's, that's a pretty easy way to, to switch between, between those two modes. And, um, well, you just saw. But obviously, you could also use um, um, this uh, switch to move back and forth between editing the layer itself or editing the mask. I wonder where you got that idea for the spotlight effect. Well, <laughs> there's a little application called Mouse Pussy that we had for quite an, a few yeah. years. Yeah, <laughs> and you, s you see that in action right now. So, um, so much for um, the, the spotlight effect. Um, but we have even more using a very similar technique. Yes. And, well, we call it the sunset effect, and you will see in a second why that is. And, um, well, we will create a virtual sunset, and who can say that of themselves that they're able to create that? So we've got an image here that already, obviously, it already has a sunset. Mm -hmm. It's just an image. It's not a video. Yeah. But let's just uh, say we want to create the illu illusion of, uh, of a video here. Mm -hmm. Because uh, uh, during a sunset, when the sun is going down, it starts to get darker and uh, then the, the color is fading <coughs> from the sky. Yeah. So that's what we'll do right now. And we're using uh, pretty much the same technique as in the previous example. Mm -hmm. So we'll just add, let's... Um, uh, this the same image. We'll add it as a, as a second layer. Just as before, hitting yeah. uh, the uh, the option key and just dragging it up. The one at the bottom, we will do color correction again. Uh, the animation we should probably yeah with the before change so. change here. So let's do a uh, let let's. Just Let's just. Oh. Okay. So now the animation is uh, across the whole duration of the mm -hmm. uh, slide. So now we'll do the color correction. On the bottom one, we will reduce the um, the saturation a little bit. Mm -hmm. We'll make it a little bit bluer. Yeah, we saw that somewhere before. And we'll make it darker. Ah, uh, that that is too much. Yeah, that is too much. We can always adjust it later. Mm -hmm. So now we're going once again. We're going to add to the top layer. We're going to add an oval mask. And let's see the. Okay, now we can better see the color a little bit more blue a little bit darker and uh, obviously right now uh, it, it uh, doesn't work yet mm -hmm. but uh, once we oops i shouldn't have deselected that once we change the softness now we can uh, what we will do, double click to, to edit uh, the mask. I position the mask right where the sun is, mm -hmm. and I will make it a lot smaller. 
even smaller than that. I think I'm already getting the idea. And here I will make it a little bit bigger. Let's check what it looks like. Oh, that it's probably it's, it's, right now hard to see on the screen. It's a very guess. a very subtle effect. So um, the image is zooming in, and the color is slowly fading from the sky. But towards the center of the, of the fading sun. Um, let's make it more pronounced by making it uh, the the, co the color of the, of the bottom layer making uh, making more more drastic uh, than it should be easier to see. Mm -hmm. Now you can see that the sky is getting yep. bluer. So from from up there to over there. The sky is losing saturation slowly, and if you, if you would make the mask even smaller at the at the finish slide, mm -hmm. um, you would see it even better. Let's just do that quickly. Let's just zoom out in a little bit more. Uh, zoom out. You think? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's probably enough. And you you can also already can see the differences from from the start frame to the to the finish frame, um, how drastic they are, and that's that's pretty that's Play pretty again. easy. So uh, effects like that uh, usually takes a little bit of uh, a tweaking until you achieve the exactly the de desired effect. Correct. So, so far, all that, that was pretty amazing by itself already. But the last one we have in our, s up our sleeves, th that's my personal, my favorite effect that you can do now with Photomagical, with masks. And you probably have seen this effect in um, movies. Let's call it the uh, Indiana James movies <laughs> <laughs> to, to avoid trademark issues. <laughs> and, um, well, you know, when Indiana James is uh, traveling from one part of the world to the other part of the world, there is a map that's moving around and uh, that's showing, showing the line where he's traveling. And our own Indy, um, he was traveling um, across... Wh wh what was that? Uh, well, I was in China, but I'm going to show you uh, with a map of the United States, uh, famous Route 66. Okay. Well, who doesn't know that? And, well, we want, we want to, to uh, show his mm -hmm. journey... Um, from, from the, where are you going? F from the east to the west? Um, from Chicago to Los Angeles. Yeah. So, so um, what um, do we do? So the, um, what you need to create this effect, uh, you obviously need an image of a map. Mm -hmm. And you load it up in Photoshop or another image editor. Mm -hmm. And a you add a second layer, a transparent layer, and draw a red line in this transparent layer. And we prepared an image like that. That's a, a Photoshop document. Let's just take a look at that. Mm -hmm. Map uh, The map, and in the second layer that is superimposed right now, um, uh, the red line. S sometimes you, you drive another route, so it doesn't make sense to, mm -hmm. to preload it with routes because, well, the route okay. pretty much depends on your own mm -hmm. trip. Anyway, so what you need to do is you need to save uh, the map and the second layer um, with uh, the, uh, the route uh, in two separate files. Mm -hmm. And now the important part, uh, you need to save those as PNG files to preserve the transparency. Okay, got it. And we've got those two, map.png uh, and, um, and root66 PNG. We've got those as separate PNG files mm -hmm. already. So what we're going to do now is we'll add the map. And um, we want to do a little bit of an a, um, animation effect on the map. So let's just zoom in on this part here. Let's rotate it, li it a little bit. Zoom a little bit more. Start in Chicago, which should be right here. And we will end up in Los Angeles. Um, well, actually, let's use copy geometry again here on this side and paste on, on that side and then move. 
there. So like this, we're we're again making sure that the rotation and and uh, the zoom is the same as in the in the start frame. Yeah, actually we could. Well, I I'm changing my mind a little bit here. Uh, change the rotation a little bit. So now we are actually moving the map a little bit and we're rotating mm -hmm. as well. But the zoom will stay uh, stay the same. Okay. Okay, that's the first layer. Now we will add the second layer right on top. Now you can see there a little red line appeared there. It's obviously way too small. Mm -hmm. And we need to make sure that the, the red line uh, is uh, correctly aligned with the map. I have an idea how to do that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you do? So yeah. once again, copy and paste a geometry. So we will copy the geometry from the map, copy geometry, and paste it, the geometry onto the red line, and boom. And it aligns perfectly the same thing on the finished slide. Exactly. We'll once again copy the geometry from the map to the red line. Amazing. Okay, so let's take a look. Um, how long? 15 seconds. Should be, should be fine, and the animation will be constant speed. Okay, let's just take a look. So now we've got a very, very uh, uh, slow animation. The map is moving over a little bit, rotating slightly, but the line is visible all the time. And you get the, you point the focus towards the the, the west side of the U.S. And so, well, maybe we can even en enhance it a little bit. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do now is we'll add once again we'll add a mask. And in this case, we will add the mask to the uh, top layer mm -hmm. with the red line. We'll go to the mask submenu, rectangle mask. And now what we're going to do, we'll switch to editing the mask. Because we don't want the layer to move any, any differently than we just, than we just um, defined. Mm -hmm. And now we'll... Uh, See, oh, I, made a mi I made a mistake, so I will undo. We need to edit the mask. And I will move the mask out of the way. Mm -hmm. and as, I release, disappears. as I release the mouse, uh, um, the, the red line disappeared here in the start. And now let's take a look at, uh, at the animation. Woo! And we still have the animation of the, the map itself um, in conjunction with the animation of the, of the route itself. That, and then we have the mask revealing the route step by step. Exactly. And uh, obviously, you can do a lot of fine tuning now. Um, the mask was moving horizontally. Uh, we could move it slightly in a um, diagonal way. Diagonal way, which would, uh, since uh, from Chicago to uh, Los Angeles, uh, um, the line, the d direct line of sight would mm. would be uh, slightly di diagonal. Yeah. We could also uh, uh, make the mask a little bit softer, uh, so that the let's. The edge uh, is a little bit softer. Yeah, the edge is a little bit softer. And then we could add more layers um, for cities that we're passing on the way. Um, that um, fine tuning an effect like that um, might take quite a while. So we're not going to fiddle uh, with all of that right now. But we did bring um, f the finished animation. Exactly. You, you, from, from your trip to China, you have. You have well, compiled let's, let's something. Let's let's take a look at the um, um, the. Oh yeah, we've got our. You're right. We've got Route 60. Animated travel routes. Animated travel routes. That one. So that's is exactly the same uh, um, um, example here. Also, with uh, it explains all the different steps that you need to take. And by the way, all of the samples that we talked about today are available for download uh, from our servers. You can now go to the to our knowledge base and um, find the the topmost FAQ entry um, that's called "How to Use the Mask Features," and um, 
there is a zip file where you can download all those files with um, where that you can d and dissect as much as you want and, and recreate as much as you want. And everything we showed today is there in a Photomagic documents form. It will also um, give you a download link to the new updated demo slideshow that also has um, all the, the new mask uh, capabilities inco incorporated into it. All right, so now let's take a look at the uh, finished uh, animated travel route effect. Um, um, once again, here we've got the uh, two layers um, mm -hmm. with the map and the, the red travel route line. And to really make, uh, uh, make it a, a nice effect, I also added a couple more text layers that uh, with bullet points used for the cities and text uh, that um, contain the names mm -hmm, of the cities. Mm -hmm. And let's just take a look at that slide. So we've got Chicago, we've got St. Louis, Santa Fe, and uh, Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And let's take a look at the animation. That is very oh, impressive. There you go. That is pretty cool. And yeah, it, it's it's done within a few minutes. You can you can add all that stuff in and it, it seems it seems pretty painless. Mm -hmm. That's that's how it's supposed to be. Well, and um I guess to wrap it up, I'll show you a couple of uh um e sample effects from my recent uh well, I did a, a, a created a slideshow about my recent trip to China. Everyone mm. who saw the first the first the webinar still remembers that we're quivering in fear. Um, that no. <laughs> Peter is ever coming back, but he did, and he brought a lot of photos, and he compiled a huge slideshow um, where well it just so shows off a little bit what we can do with with uh, masks. The, the first effect. Um, let's take a look at. Um, well, yeah, let's just start um, in the beginning here. And um, we've got the the title slide here uses a mask effect, uh, mm -hmm. but it's a very subtle one. It has um, has a, um, a kind of like a paper background and a transparent uh, la a layer of w a picture of the mountain on top of that, which is masked with a very soft uh, edge mask. And then um, there are slides uh, for all the people who came along on the trip, and that also mm -hmm. uses an, an oval mask on top of that paper background with a very, very soft edge. So it's kind of like a vignette mm -hmm, effect. Mm -hmm. So let's, t let's take a look at the, uh, the vignette effects. So let's play that. And there we go. So now you get to see here first mass effect now the the picture of the mountain coming in on top and at the bottom you still have the the paper background and now that the people are introduced each portrait is being masked with an oval very soft edged mask and it it's very subtle but the portraits are being zoomed in uh, they're animated whereas the background mm -hmm. is static so there was no Photoshop required to do all that. It's all done in inside Photomagica. That's pretty darn cool. And the uh, image files are not modified. Mm -hmm. All right, so that is the first example. Second example of masks. Let's move over a little bit. We've got um, the animated travel route. Mm-hmm. Take a look at it. Mm -hmm. uh, let's reduce the volume a little bit here. Oh. Wait, wait, wait a second. We'll do that full screen. <coughs> so here we've got the animated travel route using masks. And you can see at the top, there's another layer also masked with an airplane, mm -hmm. partially transparent. 
So that is the effect that yeah, you were yeah. talking about <laughs> Correct. earlier. Correct. Almost identically um, recreated. Pretty cool, yeah. So we have okay. we had we had masks in the in the route itself and a masked image of the of the plane flying above, right? Exactly. And uh, just to show you a th uh, second example of um, the um, uh, animated travel route, mm -hmm. um, if uh, the the red line uh, well, is is a fairly straight line. It's it's easy to do. You just move the mask out of the way and you move it into place in mm -hmm. the finish position. But uh, what if the the route uh, kind of zigzags around? In that case, it's more difficult to do. Then you need to divide the animation into separate slides, um, one slide uh, one slide for each f uh, straight section. So each time it changes the direction of the of if the, it, of if the it's a, it's a m if it's a major change of direction, yeah. yes. Yeah. So uh, in in that case, the first one. Um, moves from uh, west to east, and then the second one moves uh, down from north to south. Let's just take a quick look at that. So now we're moving east, and now we're changing direction. That's a different slide. And that is going one, down. one slide to the other without just a cut transition, I guess. Yes. And that's that's where I just change the direction, and again we have that pretty amazing effect of of a moving travel route. Mm -hmm. So there are a couple of uh, examples what you can do with masks, and like we said before, we're pretty excited to see what you guys come up with. Absolutely. Uh, so as I said before, if you find something uh, th that you that you made very very um, very nice, well, it's m most of the times. When you when you do something, um, please send it to us if you can, and and we'd love to see to see what you do with it. And the creativ your own creativity is is the limit here. And so, well, let us know because that is that is something that can be that can be exploited in so many great ways. And that we can't wait to see all the all that. And um, I saw during our presentation that there were a few questions coming in, and um, let's just browse through. Um, we we covered the one with the with the background. So the the background of the slideshow itself um, defines what what's seen behind the behind the mask on the on the bottom mm -hmm. on the bottom image. And let's see where can you get a comprehensive photometric tutorial. On the one hand, we we ship um, the the help the built-in help, which mm -hmm. can be found in the help found in the help right menu. here. And let's just show that for a second where you can find that. So, right there, you go there for the magical help. There is everything. There. there is, and there's a new chapter, obviously uh, called "Working with Masks." It just appeared magically. <laughs> <laughs> um, we will also publish the first webinar we did, um, which covers well the the baby steps until well. Almost to, to mm -hmm. advanced stuff in in Photomagico, and we're gonna publish that um, pretty soon on on our website as well. Mm -hmm. And um, there is also video training from Video to Brain um, about Photomagico. If if you wanna if you wanna dive into that, and um, I hope that kind of answers the question. Let's see what's what's the next question. Joe asks um, if I set an animation default for eight seconds, but use audio markers, say at three seconds, it does less than half of the animation. The animation does not make it um, to to where he, I guess, to where I wanted it to to end. Um, yeah, that's that's kind of true. The thing is, the second you you move a, an audio marker around, um, everything everything would have to be readjusted at, at the moment, and so. It's Photomagico still remembers whatever value you set in before to to calculate the the animation. If that is kind and, of correct, um, I I'm need saying. to add another thing: is if we automatically change the duration of the animation, uh, the animation would suddenly be much faster, and that would uh, really change the the mood uh, of the animation. Correct. So. so um, I would say in a lot of cases, the speed of the animation is more important than the uh, 
absolute ending point. And if, if it's not the case, if in your case, just... Then, then just change it manually. Correct. Uh, that's, that's basically what we can say. Um, let's see. If there, is any more, if there are any more questions, I will just check my Twitter question. Um, where's the video training? Um, the video to brain training, I guess um, it can be fun. Hmm? I think the uh, flap is <laughs> I just I just heard that our that our recording drive just well filled itself up. Um, well, I think the the record uh, the the stream is still running. G give me a second while we while we. Um, fight with technology right here. Um, and I will tell you in a second where to find the, the, the coaching. So while I'm searching, I'm going to check if there are any Twitter questions. So again, if you have any last minute questions, direct them at Twitter um, to, to Boeing Software or Boeing Slabs, whatever you prefer. So. Sergio, yeah, that's that's the question we already answered. Uh, where to find that? Um, if you Google to a uh, video to brain and photomagico, or you go to the video to brain .com, you will find the the video uh, photomagico training. This is where you can find the the video to brain tutorial on. I think it's still photomagico for you, but but the but the the basic principles um, are still completely valid for for yes. photomagic. It's there's still the, the new features, just new features like layers and masks and the timeline. But that's something we, we covered in the first webinar that you're going to find on our website um, pretty soon. And let's see if there is anything else popping up that I'm not aware of. Give me a second while I'm struggling with technology. Uh, we have nothing on lynda.com. There is, as, as I said, the, the video to brain. And um, as we said... Um, if you go to our website, Photomagico, and you will find you will find the a link to the one-to-one -one coaching if you're interested in that. And I guess, um, yeah, Tom, uh, may maybe you, you didn't get it uh, during during um, the presentation. If you're changing the background of the of the slideshow in the slideshow settings to let's say white, red, mm -hmm. or pink, who knows? Um, also, whatever is gonna be behind um, the ma the the layer. Um, is going to be that color then. So the the, exactly. the mask background ground is yeah. then going to be black, pink, white, whatever. And um, in Photomagic 4, we also added the uh, feature of having an, a background image. Mm -hmm. So it uh, doesn't really matter if you have got a black background, a white one, or a red one. Uh, even if you have an image as a background, it just shines through behind yep. the uh, um, whatever is masked away from the layers. Okay, I think that's it so far. Let last check on the on the, the the Twitters. There is nothing else. So thank you, uh, thanks a lot for coming, watching the show. Um, if you wanna if you wanna learn more, if you wanna download a demo, go to boingscom photomagic, Go download a free trial and give it a shot if you haven't already. Thank you so much, Peter, for being mm -hmm. here and well, bearing with me. Thanks for having me. And um, it was a blast. I hope you had fun. And well, if there there are any more questions, tweet us, email us, whatever, and try Photomagico. And as we said before, make sure you send us your examples of what you did with masks. Thanks a lot and goodbye. Bye. <laughs>